In the past few weeks, I received some requests from people that emailed me their robot designs and asked if I could comment on them. And after reviewing some of them, I wanted to make a video sharing these designs that I think will help anyone trying to design a robot for the coming FLL season. So here are three robots from people who agreed to share them anonymously. This first robot is actually from a beginning team starting this year and for their first FLL design, it's pretty good. It seems like they're building and improving from the base Mindstorms robot and it has two medium motors, two large motors, two color sensors, as well as a gyro sensor. This robot has a nice modular frame for their attachments where they will attach from the front. Although I do think that this many blue pins will make it difficult to remove attachments, two on each side should be more than enough. Also, since the attachment frame is directly above the sensor, this team needs to keep in mind that the sensor's wire may prevent an attachment from connecting to this right motor here, so they may have to raise or remove their medium motors. This robot's sensors are placed very well, both in terms of width and height. A lot of beginner teams place their color sensors too close or too far from the ground, and these sensors are placed nicely about one pin off the ground. The main thing this team asked me was how they could make it more compact, saying that they wanted the robot to have less empty spaces and to be shorter. And in my opinion, the reason this design can be far more compact is because the base robot design places the large motors too close together, so all the other components have to be stacked on top or placed to the side. To fix this problem, you can either have your motors further apart so you can fit a medium motor in between them, or have your large motors inverted so medium motors can be directly on top without any empty spaces. Also, if you don't want your medium motors between your large motors, you can instead put your gyro sensor there. The only other thing I think this robot can improve on is to avoid building rectangular shapes with individual arms, and this is because they can change shapes if they don't have adequate support. So instead, try to use these construction frames as much as possible when designing the robot's chassis. This next robot was very interesting to me. I haven't seen a lot of robots like this one, so it's quite unique. The robot is extremely compact and flat, mostly because its motors are inverted, saving a lot of space. It has a pretty nice attachment system where attachments can sit right on top of the frame. Also, its sensors are in a great position. This ultrasonic sensor here can be really useful by detecting how close the robot is to the desired mission or wall, and whether the robot needs to move any further or proceed to the next path. I think the main aspect that can be improved is the robot's structural support, especially on the large motors. Here, you can see that the large motors support a lot of weight from the medium motors and will support even more weight when they are connected to an attachment. However, the large motors are only connected to the brick from two locations and are not supported by the purple chassis or the surrounding frame. This can put a lot of strain on the wheels and even affect its driving if the attachment's weight is unbalanced, since the motors are essentially separate pieces barely connected to the back of the robot. This can easily be solved by putting supporting frames beneath the motors connecting them to the main chassis. The outside frame will need more support as well since it's currently only connected to the front of the robot. So this team should probably add some beams on both sides to prevent the frame from curving inward as well as from the back. They may also want to consider adding some pieces to support the wheels as axles so they are more stable when driving. This last robot is also very compact due to having inverted motors as well. It has a really boxy frame similar to the second robots and its internal chassis is also well built. Its color sensors are down here and the design doesn't waste a lot of space since these pockets can be used for storing wires, though I do believe this team can fit a gyro sensor possibly in between the large motors here. Underneath this robot uses thin wheels instead of a ball caster which may help the robot's ability to drive over missions compared to using a metal ball caster. Overall this is a pretty solid robot, however there are two things that can be improved. The first is that the current position of the brick limits the size of its attachments. Since its ports are directly above the connection gears, the wires may also get in the way. So one possible solution is to have the brick sideways. This would make a lot more room for large attachments as well as barely adding any extra height. The second thing this team should consider is to get rid of this gear train connecting the large motor to the wheels. I made and tested a design with a similar setup and in my opinion it was quite slow, even at 100% power. It also amplified the drift LEGO motors have through the two gears, so the robot was less consistent the more it turned. If this team is fine with the speed of this gear setup and takes measures to ensure the robot still drives and turns consistently, then there's no reason for any change. But if they do want to get rid of this gear setup, then they can think about having the large motors right side up, therefore having the drive shaft closer to the ground, while putting the medium motors underneath the large motors connecting to an attachment panel up top. So yeah, that was my take on 3 robot designs and I hope that this has helped any of you guys with your robot design process. If any of you guys want to share your designs with me, just email it to me and I'll be happy to help.